Hello, my name is Tim Gerhardt. I'm from LabStrong, and today we're going to install LabStrong cartridges into a Barnstead EPIR system. The important thing to remember when you do install the cartridges in the EPIR system, to always use gloves because you don't want the oil off your skin and the sodium to actually start doing anything to the cartridge because the purity will start to drop off quite a bit. So if you use gloves, you won't contaminate the outside surface of the, car of the cartridge because your water is going to pass along the outside surface of that cartridge. First thing you want to do, shut the power off. Next thing you want to do is to unplug your power cord from the outlet. You don't want that plugged in while you're dealing with the water, removing the canisters. The next thing you want to do is unplug, disconnect your water source. After your water source is unplugged, you want to go over here, open up your valve. That will allow your water to depressurize, and that goes to an atmospheric drain. Once the system is depressurized, you no longer have any water coming out of your valve, then you're going to want to take off your quarter turn locking canisters. To do that, you're going to go ahead and pull down on this ring handle. You're going to tur quarter turn, pull it, drop it down, and then set it aside. And you want to do that for all four. Now, when you have all your canisters out, you're going to want to go ahead and replace your GSX 27 small O-ring up here, because that's where your cartridge is actually going to seal. This is where you need this to really seal very well. Once those are removed, you pull your cartridge out of the bag, set the bag aside, and your cartridge has a bottom and a top. The nipple here is the top, the flat side is the bottom. Now this is the important part, is when you do install the cartridges into the EPIR system, you want to make sure that this nipple goes up around that GSX-27 O-ring that you just put up there. That has to seal. You can't drop the can cartridge into the canister and then put that up here and lock it in place because it more than likely will not seal into the top of the cartridge. The best thing to do is to put the cartridge up inside the head section and as you're pushing it up inside, twist it. That will hold it in place. Once it's there, you take your canister, put it up around it, quarter turn locking. When this pin hits the stop, you pull the pin down and then push it over till it stops again. That'll be up into your hole location. Then there's a, it's a three step pin. So you hear one, two, three clicks and it's in place. You don't necessarily have to get it to the third one, but at least to the first one. It depends on the tolerance of the canister, the handle ring, and the head section. You want to do this for each and every unit. But now, what we're going to do, because we put the first cartridge in, we're going to put the other three up empty, because we need to rinse out the first cartridge. You want to rinse this to drain with all four cart canisters in place for at least 10 minutes. And you want to do that so that there's a little bit of carbon in here. You want to get that carbon out of there flush it through the system so it doesn't get into the other canisters or cartridges. So you're going to flush that through to drain. So once you've run water through for 10 minutes to drain, you're going to need to go ahead and disconnect your water, shut the power off first, disconnect your water, unplug it. Then you're going to depressurize it by opening up your valve. Then you're going to take your canisters off once it's depressurized, drop them down. Then you're going to take your other cartridges in the proper order and each cartridge has a number stamped in the top of the cartridge. So they're gonna, you're gonna know which one it is. So your next cartridge will go up in place, twist it up in place, make sure it locks up there. Take your canister, lock it into place. Three clicks, you can do that with your third one. Checking to make sure that you have the right cartridge by looking at the stamp on the top. Twist it up into place. Quarter turn locking canister. 
locks in place. Now you've got your last one, your last cartridge. Again, checking your number. Push that up into the O-ring. Make sure it seats. Give it a little twist as you're pushing it up in there. Lock it in place. If you don't put these in correctly and they don't seat, your period of reading up here is going to be zero. And you're going to want anywhere between 15, 16, 7, up to 18. But if you don't put them in correctly, you're going to end up with zero and they're going to bypass every cartridge. So now that you've got all your cartridges in place, you're going to want to go ahead and connect your water back up, plug in your power source back up to the system, turn the unit on, water will flush through the system. Make sure that your valve at the end is open. You want to get all the air out of the system. So air is going to actually work its way through here with the water pushing it out until it gets out the other end. I usually suggest the incoming valve opening it up about halfway because you don't want a lot of pressure pushing through to get that air out because you, sometimes you get air trapped in some of the cartridges and just a slow flow of water through will help get that air out and not damage anything. So get the air out of the system. Once all the air is out of the system, you can shut the valve off and that system will go into recirculation and your period will start to drive itself up. At that point, when you've got to flush through, now you can go ahead and you can actually install your 0.2 micron final filter. This is an FL0016-1. That just threads in place. Once that's in place, you're ready to go, the system's ready to be used. Thanks for watching. At LabStrong, we are committed to making your lab life easier. For additional assistance, please contact the experts at LabStrong.